Today we're going to make the taco truck, taco, 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 taco truck trash plate. Okay, that's Say, three times exactly. <laughs> Say that a couple times fast. Um, and I haven't had anything to drink. So, um, yeah, so we're going to make that. Um, it, what's nice about this dish is it's sure to be a family pleaser and everyone um, can enjoy it. Um, the first thing we're going to make is the nacho cheese sauce. And uh, I have a small blender container I'm going to put everything in. Um, so the first thing I need is three quarter cup water. I have that here. Some sunflower seeds. Our rolled oats, three, uh, a quarter cup rolled oats. Quarter cup nutritional yeast, good old nooch, can't have too much nooch. A quarter cup roasted red pepper. Uh, okay, now I need my apple cider vinegar. Okay, now we're going to put in our, some of our spices and ingredients. I have a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. One tablespoon of smoked paprika. Teaspoon of garlic powder. And a teaspoon of onion powder. I have a teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of miso. Now miso, we typically get the white miso. It's a lighter, milder miso. Um, but as we have found out that miso is a fermented product. Fermented foods are good for you. It doesn't take much each day for you to enjoy the benefits of miso. So um, and there's different types. There's yellow miso, there's brown miso. Um, the brown miso has, is the darkest and the most flavorful. It's a very strong flavor. So we typically use white. We just started using brown. And the last thing is hot sauce. Now this is a hot sauce of choice. Um, right now we're using chipotle, um, cholula sauce, and they have a chipotle one, which we just love. And, and we're not a real spicy people, um, but this is our go-to lately. And you can control the spice on this, uh, you know, one to two teaspoons. It depends on your liking. Um, this isn't a real spicy dish. I'm just going to put in two because we don't mind this one too much. And now I'm going to put this in the, in the uh, blender and blend it in puree until it's nice and smooth. Okay, so we have that all blended, and this is what it looks like. It's sort of a thick orange mixture. Um, not quite pourable, um, but good enough for us to scoop out. So we've made that, and now we can start assembling our dish. Next thing we're going to do is take our sweet potatoes. I cooked them ahead of time. And we're going to um, scoop these all out and put them in a bowl and mash them up with a little bit of cumin. So we're going to just take out all the pulp.
And then we're going to mash that pulp up. And then we're going to add some cumin to it. Now with cumin for us, we like to grind our own. Um, the store-bought, already pre-ground, has a tendency to not be as flavorful as when you grind your own. So we grind, I mean, we use cumin enough in our house. So we buy a bag of cumin seed. We have an old coffee um, grinder. And we use that to grind our spices if we need to. Okay. So now we're just going to take a fork, mash this up. Good. So we have our potato mashed up. And we need a teaspoon of cumin. And then just stir that in. So what's great is I measured, I pre-measured out my corn, my black beans. So now what we have to do is get our plate. It's a nice lasagna dish, thir nine by 13. And we're gonna start doing our layers. So we, we just get corn tortillas um, already pre-cooked. Um, we prefer the Whole grain, some of them you'll see that they'll say whole grain on them and that's what we go for, the whole corn. Um, and that's what these are. So I put six in the bottom. One, two, and I just overlap them. And then I take one cup of salsa and spread that over the whole bottom. Just take a spoon, spread it out. This sort of ends up being a, a, a taco lasagna, basically. Okay, and now we'll layer Red pepper, peppers, rice, beans, rice, and the corn. Half the beans. Half the corn. And some rice. Just three cups or more. Now we always have some rice made up in the fridge, so it makes it easier to prepare things quickly if you have some rice made up. You really can't do this wrong. And now we take some of the nacho sauce. And we just are going to dollop this over the top. So I just sort of take dollops of it and spread it out. Six to eight dollops. I just spread that a little bit. It smells so good. And now I take another six and put that on top. And I sort of press it down a little bit because this will be nice and full.
And now we take we take the sweet potato mixture, spread that over. And this is where we're going to put our greens in. So, as you know, with spinach, spinach is a very... Um, it compact cooks down. In this dish it doesn't cook down too much because you're not actually sauteing it or anything. So we just put a nice thick layer this is the one case where it doesn't shrink down the same but press it down another cup of salsa Spread the salsa out as best you can and take another six corn tortillas. Press it down because we still have one more layer to go. And now we just put the rest of the ingredients. First the salsa. Spread it out. Beans. pepper corn some more rice And we take the last of the, the nacho sauce and take that and put that on top. This nacho sauce is real good. You could thin it out a little bit and use it as a dressing. Um, a lot of different uses for this, especially once you taste it. It should give you some ideas of what you can do. I spread that just as much as I can. Don't spend a lot of time doing it. And then you put on the last six tortillas. Press it down gently. Cover it with some aluminum foil and it's ready to go in the oven. You could hold this overnight, even probably two days with no problem in the fridge, or you can bake it off right away. So um, you're going to put it in the oven at 350 for 45 minutes, and then you're going to uncover and bake for another 10 minutes. 
and you have your meal. We like to top this with guacamole. You could buy store-bought or you could make homemade. Um, some fresh scallions. Um, we have some suggestions for toppings that you may like to put on and, and have your favorite hot sauce on the side. We're going to actually now make some, some salsa. Uh, our family likes um, different salsas on this and fresh salsa is always better on these things than, than store-bought. So today we're going to make a pineapple mango salsa um, to go on top of this after it's all cooked. Now, actually this salsa is the same recipe for our, our honeydew mango salsa that we've made before. Uh, I just swapped out the uh, pineapple and the, the uh, honeydew. And I swapped, swapped the honeydew out and put in the pineapple. Um, and it's a good flavor. And we've, we can do peach. We, we did that the other day because mm -hmm. we had some fresh peach from, from um, the market and we thought, wow, that would be great. So um, we're going to take um, a cup of pineapple. I'm going to rinse out my cup measure. And we like to, you can use canned. Um, we actually had some fresh um, that we just got at the market today and figured, ooh, that always tastes a little bit better. Just make sure you drain it when you use the can. Canned, yeah. Um, tomatoes. You know, and, and, and this is really sort of winging it. You know, you put a little of this, a little of that. Um, yes, I give you measurements as a, 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 a way to start. And you can, but if you like yours more tomatoey or less peppery or something, you can decide how you want to, um, what proportions you want. Now we talked about um, knives the other day. I sent out the video and this is a case where if you don't have a real sharp knife, serrated knives work great on tomatoes. Just um, you don't have to fight with the skin. So I'm going to... This is how I chop tomatoes. I do slices that way, and then I uh, turn it and do it this way, and then I just go down. And it chops it nice and quick for you. Um, sometimes I'll use Roma tomatoes because they're not as seedy, and I can actually get the seeds out better. Um, in this case, I'm not even bothering. I'm just taking the seeds, and I don't really care. So two to three tomatoes. These are medium size, so I'm actually um, going to use three because we have one small one and uh, two medium size. So typically it would be like two large tomatoes. And, uh, yeah, so I don't. We need another pepper. I like orange. In, in this case, because we have the red of the tomatoes, and I like the contrast. You could use yellow, but yellow, you know, with the pineapple, um, it would just look like more pineapple, and same with the mango. So I like orange in this. You can use any color. You can use green if you like. Um, so uh, I picked out an orange today. Do the same thing we did earlier, and this has, like, no seeds in it. That's great. Not a very fertile pepper. I guess not. And that what's nice is this is so refreshing. And especially using, um, you know, we have such a bounty of fresh produce in the summer. And that's why making fresh salsa, I mean, you could sort of 
understand somebody not making it in the winter when things are cold, but in the summer when you have access to all the farm markets and fresh produce, why wouldn't you make a little fresh um, salsa? Onion, we need some onion for this. I like to use red onion here again for the contrast, but it's also for the um, antioxidants. The red onions have different antioxidants than um, white onions, so it's good. And it, it's a very nice onion for, um, for salads. So I take this and you know, this is a pretty big onion. You could use, like, if it was a medium sized onion typically, but this is a pretty big onion. How that, one small red onion is big enough? Probably, yeah. Um, you don't te technically need a lot. Now, in the recipe, I put jalapeno, and I, I did use that the other day. I used a little too much for our family, and it was a little too spicy. It also might have been a serrano pepper. Serrano peppers are a li little smaller than jalapeno, but they look a lot alike, and I think it might have crossed the bins um, because it was too potent, and you know, usually I use a half to a third of a jalapeno, and that's enough heat for our family. And, and Peppers can range in heat. Even a jalapeno can range in heat um, different Scoville units, which is the degree of hotness. So what you might want to do is anytime you have a hot pepper, chop up a little, put it in, taste it, see if you like it that way, um, and decide if you need more or not. The other thing you could do, so you could use Serrano if you like real hot spicy. Jalapeno is sort of middle of the road. Poblano are even milder. And I love the color of these things. And I'm not going to use the whole thing. Um, but I'm going to cut off some. And even with these, with this, you can taste it. You know, you, like with a jalapeno, I'd probably use a lot smaller piece. I know poblano aren't as bad. So I can take that and um, decide how much I want to put in. It's not spicy at all. Not like the other day. And we got rid of that, I think. So the poblano are nice and mild. I don't think anybody will have a, a hard time with the poblano. And I'm actually going to put in a little bit more. There's no heat. I didn't kill you guys last time. You all survived. <laughs> Just had a lot of complaints. Okay, mangoes. Mango. Don't know if you've... Uh, Ever cut mangoes or used mangoes? Um, different people have different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you my way. Basically, I cut off each side because there's a big pit in the middle. And uh, you can't cut through the pit. And if you, you can waste a lot of the mango if you don't cut close enough. So uh, I'll show you how I prep this. So basically, I cut down each side. Come on, Doug. And cut that down. And I cut the sides off because the sides are typically has some flesh there too. But this is the whole pit right there. So we can't even use that. And then what I do is I'll just cut little squares and I just then cut off the skin. And with the big sides, I make some cuts.
and then I can spread it open and now I have access to the, all those different cubes and I can just cut them off. So our salsa is almost done. Now all I have to do is put on some parsley or cilantro if you're a cilantro person. Uh, I know there's um, not a debate, it's just the way your genetics are. Some people really like cilantro and it's wonderful. And then there's a whole group of people who, to them, cilantro tastes like soap. So we say if you're one of those soapy people that you think cilantro tastes like soap, replace it with, replace it with parsley because it has sort of a similar um, texture and it gives the salsa sort of a, a similar taste without that soapy taste. It, it's a herb, so you're getting those herbs in, which are their plants. Herbs are plants, and if you're trying to get your whole 30 in every week, uh, your 30 different plants, this is one. And if you take a look at this, you, let's see how many different things we have, plants, do we have just in this. So we have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven different plants just in the salsa. Not, that's not even including the, the, the main dish. It's just the salsa has seven different things. And then the sauce, too, the cheese sauce. That's actually a lot. Cheese sauce has seeds. It has oats. <laughs> There's more. In this meal, we should add them up all at the end. We should see how much we have. Now we need some lime or lemon juice, okay? And this is two tablespoons of lime juice. I like using lime. It has a, I, I just like the, the flavor of it. So you just pour that in. You get some salt. Salt that up, it doesn't require a lot. Salt enhances flavor. Unless you have uh, blood pressure issues, um, salt can be your friend too. It, it adds flavor. If you have a dish that's a little bland, just add a little salt and it can make the world a difference. I guess I got rid of that fork. Now just toss it and help meld all those flavors together. And this is something that benefits from sitting together um, so all the flavors just meld together. But look at those colors. You know, it's just a kaleidoscope of colors here. And it's just so fresh and good for you. And that's our salsa. Nice and colorful, fresh to go on. Uh, keep it in the fridge until you're ready. Um, if you can prep this a day ahead of time, great. If you can prep it, just a couple hours is all it needs to meld those flavors together. Of course, you can eat it fresh as soon as you make it, but I like to let it sit for a little bit. So the great thing about this dish is Sherry just counted up all the, the herbs, spices, and plants that are in this. And she came up to about 25. So one meal, you get 25 out of your 30 for, the, for your gut biome to get that. Just in one meal. Now we're going to add avocado to that, so that gave us our 25. Um, there are scallions that um, we'll chop and put those on. So scallions plus the avocado, about there we 25. About 25. So I, it's really not that hard to get it, but I, I just want... The, the reason I'm focusing on that number and, and, and sharing that with you is really take a look at um, making you aware of how easy it is to get those 25 in a, in a simple uh, week, or I mean the 30 in a simple week. And, and actually they say the more the better, so try to get your 30. Sorry for our technical difficulties. Um, I hope you enjoy this dish as much as our family does. Thanks for coming. The Plant Camp.